Hi everyone, I hope you are all doing well. If you are new here, my name is Rowena and if you are a returning viewer, then hello and welcome back. Today is day one of my 100 day no buy experiment. So previously I called this the no money challenge or the no money experiment but I think it is going to work better for me to have a time frame so I set 100 days as this was a nice round number and today being March the 15th is day one and this will end on June the 23rd. So previously as you may know I was going to do a no money challenge or experiment and due to unforeseen circumstances with my daughter I was unable to go past a few days. However hopefully things now are a little more settled and there are no family emergencies within this next 100 days and we can get on with the experiment. So when I say this is a 100 day no buy experiment that includes food and household goods during this next 100 days. So I have had to do a little bit of preparation in order to make this experiment work, hopefully. But I'll get into the preparation side of it afterwards. But there are a few reasons I want to do this experiment. Firstly, I think that as a society, we are way too dependent on money for everything. We use money not just for the necessities in life, but we also use it for our entertainment, for combating boredom, for making ourselves feel better. We kind of use money as the go-to for everything. So I think by removing that option out of life, then I will be able to see what that causes within me emotion wise <clears throat> and also how I deal with any of these things that come up. Secondly, it is a fantastic way to save money. I consider myself to be a pretty frugal person already but even I am subject to buying things that I don't always really need and maybe just want from time to time. Although this is probably far less than say the average person, it still happens. So during this time, having that option completely removed from my life means that I'm going to be able to save a lot more money. Thirdly, I wanna see if this is a sustainable lifestyle for me. I would love to do this moving forward and keep it as a regular part of my life. Having breaks of maybe one to two weeks in between where I can go and buy any sort of preparation supplies, do things that we need to do around the house and buy anything that I need for my personal self like maybe clothing or um, makeup or whatever it turns out to be. So I think doing this first 100 days is going to give me a lot of insight into anything that I need to change in the future and whether or not I actually can do this going forward. So in order to conduct this experiment, I need to have a few rules in place. So there are some things that I will be paying for during this time, but they are not actually buying anything. Firstly, I will be paying for my bills because obviously I need to continue having power to my house. We need to pay our home loan. Uh, I can't like just get behind in paying bills. So I will definitely be covering all of those and they kind of will just be happening in the background anyway. Secondly, I will be covering any medical costs that arise and that would include prescriptions and doctor's visits if I need any of those. Thirdly, I will be paying for fuel for my car, but I am going to really try to minimize how often I'm using my car. Last time I filled my car up, it wasn't even completely empty and it cost me $69 because fuel was $2.25 because it's gone crazy at the moment. Normally it would have cost me about $49 to fill up the car so that shows you just how much higher I paid for it. It was ridiculous. So definitely going to try and use my car less during this 100 days. So the fourth rule is that I will pay for any urgent repairs if they come up. For instance, if something happens with my car that really needs to be repaired, I will get that done. And if anything happens around the house that we need to fix, for instance, 
if there was a burst pipe or if we had a broken window which was allowing access to our house if we weren't home or allowing the weather in then obviously I will pay to have those done but any other little bits and pieces around the house will not be paid for during this 100 day no buy experiment and the last rule I have in place is that if I run out of anything I will not accept gifts or handouts from anyone because I would not normally accept a handout from other people and also this is my choice to do a 100 day no buy experiment and I do not want to have this this <laughs> I do not want this to have a financial impact on anybody else for my choice so there will be no gifts or handouts during this time apart from my birthday where I will allow gifts. <laughs> so 100 days is quite a long time to buy nothing, including our groceries. So 100 days works out to be 14.28 weeks to be exact. Uh, so I have done some preparation in order for us to be able to get through the next 14.28 weeks. However, I am very aware that I am probably not prepared for everything because this is the first time I've ever taken on this kind of experiment or challenge. So hopefully I will learn if I go forward and do this in the future, what other things that may have arisen that I would really need. So obviously there are some things I've calculated like covering Bella's kitty litter and cat food over the next 100 days because I can't have her going hungry and I can't have her not having a clean kitty litter box. She's an inside cat so she doesn't go outside at all therefore her kitty litter tray is her toilet. So I've done that. So I have stockpiled food and supplies for the three of us, me, my husband and my cat Bella but my husband will not be joining me in the remaining part of the no buy experiment. He has agreed to no food or household requirements or being able to purchase those or give me anything that I need but if he wants anything for for his own personal use then he is going to continue to purchase if and when he needs it. He's quite a frugal person and he has access to his own money. We each have some our own money so this will not impact my part of the experiment at all. So being healthy is a priority for us and eating healthy is a big part of that. So I have done some shopping for fresh produce in my preparation and I have then gone ahead cleaned prepared all of this and put it into the freezer for use over the next 100 days. Now I probably don't have enough but I will have to see. I also already had some frozen vegetables in the freezer and I have bought just a few more to add to that so fingers crossed I've got enough to maintain our health to a good standard over the next 100 days. I don't usually buy plastic bags as you might know by now but for this challenge I did end up buying some Ziploc bags because trying to freeze produce in glass containers in the freezer just takes up way too much room for this. The great thing about these bags is that I can wash them out and reuse them so I will have them for a long time going forward. I don't really like using plastic but sometimes in this case as long as it can be reused I don't mind too much. So now I'm going to take you through my fridge, freezer, pantry and my stockpile cupboards to show you what I have purchased to get us through for the next 100 days. So I'll take you for a quick look through the pantry and if you saw my pantry tour nothing much has really changed. I have got some I've got all of my normal ingredients there so I'm not going to go through this too much but there are a few extra bits in the canned goods and the um, sauces and things however most of my stuff is in a stockpile cupboard which I will show you in a moment. These baskets they hold most of my dried goods so I've got plenty of beans and oats and noodles plus I've got some pastas and I've also got spices overflow in there. Down the bottom here there's some potatoes, avocados and onions and Bella's food which has still got to be delivered and I've got a couple of bags of rice. 
So a really, really quick rundown of what's in the fridge. There is just some Nutalex, which I use sometimes in baking. There is some tofu and some tempeh on the top shelf, plus a few jars of pickles. I'll lift the camera up so you can have a proper look. Now I do have another delivery due tomorrow afternoon from Coles, but my last one was canceled. So I am keeping my fingers crossed that this one will not be canceled because if it is, then I'm going to be in trouble <laughs> and the next 100 days will be even more interesting. Also, just so you can see, this is what I have. Plus the fresh produce, I've got so lots of things in there that I won't go through everything, plus some fresh produce in this drawer. So that's it for the fridge. So very quickly, this is my freezer and that there you can see the frozen capsicum. There's some frozen broccoli. There is also some flatbreads in there. This drawer has got a lot of bread in it. This one has got more frozen vegetables that I've done myself. Some scraps for making stock, coconut cream. Down here, I've got some frozen vegetables. And in this drawer, I have some hash browns, just one bag because I really love them and have them as an occasional treat. A few icy poles and some frozen um, pineapple pieces. Now for my first, now for my first stockpile cupboard, you can see I've got some nutritional yeast. These are bags of muesli for my husband. These are all rolled oats and some sultanas. I've got some cashews for cooking. And I've got some bread and pizza flour back there. So next in this cupboard, we've got some dried legumes. So we've got chickpeas, lentils, and some beans. Then I've got lots of dried noodles, plus a couple of cans of yeast, but the rest in there is all some dried noodles. So lastly, in this cupboard, you will see I've got a mixture of things. There are uh, quite a few rolls of toilet paper here, more dried noodles and most of my tinned and jarred foods. I've got plenty of olive oil there at the back, plus I've also got some bicarb soda and one packet of potato chips as a treat. But that's pretty much it. That is what we are looking at for 100 days of no buying. So I spent a total of $562.93 for everything that I have stockpiled for us. Now that, that may sound like a lot of money until you divide it between 14.28 weeks and then that works out to $39.42 a week or $5.63 a day. Now it costs us to, for Bella's food and kitty litter, about $1.20 a day. So that, that leaves about $4.40 for the two of us or $2.20 per person per day for food and household requirements, including our toiletries and everything. So that is a really small amount of money. So on top of the money that I have spent on foods that I have purchased for preparation for this. I have also spent some money on getting the products I require for coloring my own hair. Now I have never colored my own hair before and I did start going gray at 27 and have been coloring my hair ever since. Now I know some of you will be like, no, no, just let it go gray naturally, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet. And maybe sometime in the future, I will be. Now the products I've ordered online and they won't be delivered until my birthday. So I am going to try doing my own hair just after my birthday. And I will give you an update on that to see how it goes. Now, however, if you see me wearing my hair up a lot in future videos, you will know why. So let's, fingers crossed, it turns out okay. So this is day one and I am both excited and a little bit nervous about what's to come. Now, I really hope to have my website and forum up in the next one to two weeks. And if you are interested, I will be keeping a kind of diary update on there to let you all know how I'm doing. I will also obviously make a video at least at the very end of this experiment to share with you what I found and whether I think I can do this going 
forward and whether I think this is a useful way for anyone to try and live. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching again, everybody. I will see you very soon with my bicarb soda video, which has taken way longer to make than I did expect, but look out for that if you're interested. That's it for today. Bye for now. See you soon.